So in the last tutorials I showed you how to code a precise grappling ability that lets you pull yourself toward any object. Then I also covered how to code a swinging ability with omnidirectional movement, which means mid-air you can go left, right and shorten or extend your cable. And today we're going to take all of this and combine it into an awesome dual swinging slash alternate grappling ability. And yeah, I totally made that name up. No matter if you're facing small gaps, large areas, mysterious flying blocks or really anything with a collider on it, you'll be able to freely move around. So let's get started. First of all, you want to open up the swinging script. And if you don't have it, make sure to watch this tutorial first. Okay, so now you have all of these variables here and currently they're all in singular. There's one grapple point, one joint component and so on. If you want to implement dual swinging, this of course needs to be changed. So let's take all of these variables and turn them into lists. And now just as a quick explanation, a list stores multiple variables of the same type. And they can be accessed with the square brackets and the index number. So the grapple point of the left hook would be grapple point 0 and the right one would be grapple points 1. I hope that makes sense. And later we're also going to need a few more variables, so make sure you have them. Also don't worry about the errors, that's just because the old variables no longer exist. Now all lists need to be set up. And for some variables it makes sense to do this directly in Unity. For example, let's duplicate the grapple gun and then assign the gun tips of both the left and right gun to the gun tips list. For all of the other lists, it's a bit cleaner if you do it in code, since you don't need to drag and drop anything into them. So just create a little function that's called in void start and in there initialize the lists and add the elements that you're going to need. And now the first thing that needs to be changed when working with two or more hooks is the aim prediction. So go to the check for swing points function and let's make a few changes. First, let's put all of the code inside of a for loop because of course we need to perform multiple raycasts. And now instead of using the old variables, you need to use the lists. And the index is always going to be i. And now just to make sure that everyone understands this, the for loop always starts with i equals to 0 and runs the whole code for the left variables and then it increases i to 1 and runs the code again for the right variables. Ok, now let's tackle the aiming. What you want to achieve is that the two hooks don't aim at the same point but rather are separated a bit. Now you could handle this in code with quaternions and rotations and stuff but let's keep it simple. So go to Unity and create two game objects inside of the camera. One aims a bit more to the left and one a bit more to the right. Now you can drag them in the point aimers list and switch back to the code. Here let's just change the sphere cast start position and direction from the camera to the point aimers we just created. Then also make sure to duplicate and assign the prediction point. And with that the prediction points will now show up left and right if there are any objects. However, you probably can't try this out since there are a lot of errors in the script. So let's fix them. First, let's go over the start and stop swing functions. Basically, we just need to make them able to handle multiple hooks at the same time. So let the function take in an integer for the swing index and then just go over all of the variables that we changed to lists, like the prediction hits, grapple points, gun tips and joints. And then access the right item by using the swing index. And now you can call start swing 0 to start the left swing and start swing 1 to start the right swing. So now you just repeat the same process with the stop swing function. And then you can add the second input key which is going to be the right mouse button. And now you can just start and stop the left swing whenever you press the left mouse button and vice versa. And to make sure the visualization works correctly as well, quickly update the draw rope function to this. Also, you need to change the current grapple position to a list and add it to the list setup function. And before we move on to the omnidirectional movement, it would be a good idea to check if everything works so far. So quickly comment out all of the errors left and head over to Unity. There let's go to the second grappling gun object and add a line renderer component to it. You can use the exact same settings as for the first one. Now make sure to assign all of the variables in the swinging script, especially the point aimers and line renderers. If you know it play, you should be able to use both of your hooks to swing around. 
Okay, now for the omnidirectional movement, you can keep the code for adding force to the left, right or forward direction. However, what changes when using two hooks is the point where you pull yourself when pressing space. If only one hook is active, then the pull point is exactly at the hit position of this hook. But if two hooks are active, then the pull point is going to be in the middle of them. You can calculate this midpoint by taking the vector from one point to the other and then multiplying it with 0.5. And now when you shorten or extend your cable, just use the pull point instead of the swing point. Also, with two hooks you need to shorten and extend both joint components, but for this I would recommend to make a small extra function. And make sure that the ODM gear movement function is always called when one of the two hooks is active. And now you should be able to use air movement with two hooks. Okay, now let's combine this with a dual grappling ability. And for that you want to open up the grappling script from this tutorial. And first I think it makes sense to move all of the code over to the swinging script, since there you already have the aim prediction and list set up. So copy paste all of these variables to where the variables of the swinging script are. And then also delete the grappling point vector and add this grappling pool. But let's make it a list and set it up in the list setup function. Also copy paste the cooldown code in void update. And now you can take all of the custom functions and move them over as well. And I would also recommend to make separate regions just for a bit more structure. And since you move the code, you'll also need to go back to Unity and reassign all of the grapple variables. Then let's change the grapple functions to work with two hooks. And this is pretty much the same as before. So in start grapple, let the function take in a grapple index. Then remove all of the raycasts, since they're already done in the check for swing point function. And then you can use the lists just as before. Now if we move on to the execute grapple function, we're also going to add a grapple index. But this causes a small problem, since the invoke function doesn't support taking in arguments. So we need to make the execute grapple function a coroutine, then add the delay manually and now you can just use start coroutine instead of invoke. And the rest of the changes are just to implement the lists. But when you move on to stop grapple, you'll notice that there's the same problem as before. So once again, make it a coroutine, call it with start coroutine and change the rest of the function. And now all of the grappling code is able to work with multiple hooks. However, the functions are never really called. So move all of the input stuff you have so far into a myInput function. Call it in void update and let's quickly go through this. So the way I handle it is that when you hold down shift and press down the left or right mouse button, then you can start the left or right grappling ability. If you don't hold down shift, you'll instead use the swinging ability. And then of course, you're always able to stop the grappling or swinging if you release the keys again, no matter if you're holding down shift or not. And that's basically it. There are just a few things left that need to be added to make the abilities work together. So if you are swinging and then use the left or right grapple, you want to immediately stop the swinging ability, because otherwise the grapple wouldn't really work. And if you are currently grappling and then use the swinging ability, you want to stop the active grapple. So let's create these three functions to implement this in code. And then all you need to do is cancel all active grapplings in the start swing function and also cancel all active swings in the start grapple function. And since it doesn't make sense to use both grapples at the same time, let's also make them cancel each other. And one last thing, in the draw rope function, you will need to draw the rope not only if you're currently swinging, but also if you're grappling. And also don't set the line renderer position count back to zero in stop swing, instead do it in the draw rope function. And in your player movement script, make sure to call the cancel active grapples function on collision. If you now go back to Unity, assign all of the variables and hit play, you should now be able to use all abilities in combination. And with that, you just coded a full dual swing slash alternate grappling ability and are ready to set out to become the greatest titan hunter of all time. <laughs> I didn't even remember I wrote that in my script. 
As always, you can download the project file over my Discord server, or if you want to support me, you can also check out the full Movement Lab project file that contains all abilities I've ever covered and a lot more. It's available for all of my patrons. But for now, thank you so much for watching. If this tutorial has helped you in any way, make sure to like it in return, and also don't forget to subscribe for more awesome tutorials.